Hey guys, All the Way with Alloway here with Breaking Bad writer George Masteris, who is nominated for an Emmy for his episode Dead Freight. So what about this season do you think made the Emmys finally acknowledge you guys? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just more, it takes a while to build in the consciousness yeah. or, or what have you. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, I think we feel like any one of our episodes could have been nominated this year mm -hmm. or any, any other year. Um, but, uh, you know, it's great to, great to, that we finally broke through. So how is this show, you know, from that initial meeting for Breaking Bad, how has it evolved? In what ways is it different than you thought it would be? I think there's been a real consistency in the writer's room. Um, Peter Gould and myself have been on staff for the, since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Maura Wally Beckett and Sam Catlin mm -hmm. came on the second year, and Tom Schnauz came on the third year. But other than that, we've, we've been a really consistent writer's staff. Um, the show has evolved, I think, a little bit tonally because, you know, the, the show is really about the character evolving and mm -hmm. so things evolve a little bit I think yeah. um, as the character evolves. Mm -hmm. uh, so with Dead Freight you know it's an episode that involves this heist and you guys actually shot in Santa Fe which I think is so cool that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid was yeah, also yeah. shot on the same line so what other, other sort of influences did you take when um, you take the tone of Breaking Bad but then you combine it with this like heist western mm -hmm. episode? Yeah. Um, so the yeah the idea of the train heist was very attractive to us because you know Breaking Bad in a lot of ways is sort of like a modern western and it has mm -hmm. that that look to it that sort of wide sort of John Ford Sergio Leone kind of look um, and that location really played into that but I think there's a couple differences and one is okay so how do you make this a Breaking Bad type heist right. and that's where the the concept of the heist the the, the the logistics of it came in and it, you know is this not a, a heist where they're using guns and intimidation it's a very breaking bad kind of thing so it's about displacement and it's about the chemistry and it's about how do we pull this off in a very breaking bad manner and have hopefully every bit as, as exciting as you know a wild sort of shoot 'em up western heist yeah. but without a gun involved and but I mean, in a breaking yeah, bad in way in a breaking bad way and and so you know the research uh, you know came into play and you know through the research and reaching out to hazardous waste transportation experts you learned that it was you know the the, the methylamine being a schedule one highly regulated chemical mm -hmm. you know it's weighed once when you load it and it's weighed again when it's unloaded so that you'll mm -hmm. know whether or not it's been right so how do these how could these guys actually pull this off and the idea of displacing and replacing the methylamine with water came in but then you know the research also revealed that Okay, so water's heavier than methylamine, it's going to sink. So Todd started pumping it, you know, later, after Jesse was siphoning his stuff out of the bottom so as not to foul the mm -hmm. methylamine. And so that played into, okay, they have to get this done within a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And so the clock, and you, know, you could build tension based on, you know, the per chemistry and the logistics of trying to pull us off. So well, that's interesting that the research actually informs you know, building tension as a right, writer. Right. Well, and originally you guys like wanted helicopters involved and like ATVs and jumping off the train, but because of budget and location restrictions, you kind of have to scale back and go, how can we actually do this? What are other moments, I'm curious, throughout the seasons that you guys have had these like epic ideas and you kind of had to scale back and make it plausible? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, speaking about the, the train heist in particular, I, I just having a train heist was such a huge, I, I, you know, when we threw that out there and the idea was circulating, I didn't think it would actually come to fruition yeah. because I, you know, just getting those, the number right. of cars, I mean, the cars that we brought in from Texas and just the, the ability to have that spur line, I mean, that was, that was just a coup mm -hmm. and, and it's a great credit to the producers that were mm -hmm. able to pull this mm -hmm. off and not just say no. Um, so, I mean, I think the ideas of helicopters and all this stuff were, it was just, you know, I don't know that those were very seriously that we were yeah. just sort of tossing around ideas about mm -hmm. how, how they could do this. Um, but just getting a train heist itself was, was huge. Yeah. Um, and, um, and it was, you know, it was a big, a big production wise. It was obviously 
if not the biggest one of the bigger episodes. And you directed it as well. Yeah, yeah. So is it nice to, to kind to of that. have your hands in something like that, being such a big episode? Absolutely. I mean, I just feel so lucky to have been able mm -hmm. to do that that episode, and, and um, um, yeah, I mean, and I love trains too. So it was like, you know, it's like being in a candy store. It was, it was well, so and much. and it's so great that you guys have had the same DP, Michael Slavis. You yeah. Know, from the beginning yeah. to kind of keep that aesthetic through line. Yeah, Michael's great. So yeah. what's your relationship as a director working with him? How did you, for this episode in particular, take the Breaking Bad tone and combine it with this Western heist kind of film? Yeah, uh, you know, Michael is, is yeah, he's just the, the artist in residence there on, on the show. And, and so, um, you know, as a director, you work very, very closely with him and, you know, you bounce ideas off of him. Um, you tell him what you want it to look like and what what you're thinking, and, and you know it, it's a very collaborative kind of process. And he's mm -hmm. just instrumental in all the episodes, and, and he maintains that aesthetic, like you said, mm -hmm. that look that that was established, you know, by by Vince in, in the pilot. And working with Brian Cranston, you know, he's such a serious dude, um, or at least that's what, how we view him through Walter White. So. Working on an episode like this, which is just so fun, it must have been a blast to make. I'm curious, like, what's it actually like on set with him? You guys have to have like some kind of fun out in the desert. Oh yeah, no, go. Brian's, uh, uh, yeah, it's a breath, constant breath of fresh air. I mean, he's a serious dude, and so far as he is, you know, you know, a fantastic artist and a great, mm -hmm. great actor. But he's just a pleasure to be around, and he keeps the tone light. And you know, I'm running around trying to juggle everything and stressed out about getting the, the things shot and there's mm -hmm. Brian is there and he's joking around with the cast and crew and, and keeping it keeping it you know light and copacetic uh, while we're setting up the next shots and running around and doing that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so it's tremendous and um, and uh, he's a director too obviously he, he, you know, he's directed some of our, our greatest episodes mm -hmm. And so he understands what it's all That's about, be great. and it's mm -hmm. great. And um, and just working with an actor of that caliber is, is fantastic because you know just allowing him to discover stuff in the scenes and mm -hmm. seeing that. So you, you know you write something, and then you envision how to shoot it as a director, and then to have like great actors and all the, all the cast, fantastic. You have someone like Brian or Aaron, and see what they come up with in the moment. And being able to open yourself up to that is just, I mean, that's what directing is. It's one of the most rewarding mm -hmm. aspects of it, is to, to discover that with the actors in the moment. They sort of breathe the intricacies into the characters. Right. And what's so interesting is you've got this film coming out that you're, uh, are you directing, writing? Oh, writing? Yeah, uh, I'm writing at, yes. yeah. Rupert, Rupert Sanders Rupert is Sanders directing. is yeah. directing, and it's about, it's based on the life of a real life DEA uh, narcotics. Yeah, Federal Bureau of Narcotics. So, yeah, before the DEA. Yeah. How is it different, you know, working on something based on real life? I mean, clearly you have a passion for uncovering the reality in a situation. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about that project. Yeah, um, it's uh, it is based on real life events. It, it, it's it's ninety church is the name of the book. Ninety church, which yes. Which is written mm -hmm. by an actual uh, former agent with the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, which was this group of. Uh, 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 narcotics agents that existed prior to the DEA. Um, it's existed since the 30s and it was disbanded in 68. But the New York office in particular was the most effective law enforcement agency in, in US history. Mm -hmm. And they're little remembered because the group was disbanded in 68. And after a massive sort of corruption probe, um, which took place during the time this movie is, is going on. Um, but although many of the agents did time uh, and were, were charged with various crimes, um, uh, they were the most effective law enforcement. At a time when the FBI denied that the mafia or organized crime existed in America, they were the most effective in taking on the mafia. Mm -hmm. And um, they did things in a very kind of devious way because a lot of them came from the spy world during the Cold War. And so they had very deep kind of spy yeah. type training and they were able to penetrate the mob and get the mob sort of killing each other in a way as opposed to just arresting them. I am them. so sold so, right now. I'm like, yeah. this is juicy. So the idea, you know, the story of these guys, which is in a way kind of tragic, is that 
their lives were so dangerous that they were very much like soldiers in war, and a lot of yeah. them, a lot of the, the men are older now, and they still suffer from a kind of PTSD and oh, sleep God, with yeah. guns under their pillows, even in their 60s and 70s, because their their jobs were so dangerous, yet they're largely forgotten about. It's like a, a chapter in U.S. history, in the history of law enforcement, that's kind of been, you know, I don't know whether it's been brushed from the table, but they're largely, because it was disbanded, and they came up with this new group, the DEA, which is a lot more control and a lot more oversight. Um, people forgot about this group, and so it's sort of bringing their stories out and how right. how they consider themselves soldiers on the front lines of a major war against the mafia, um, and uh, um, and yet people kind of brush their history under the table now. Well, um, I think all of your because they did back. things in a very different yeah. way back then. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's. What you're exploring with this seems to have very similar themes to Breaking yes. Bad, so all of your Breaking Bad fans, right. <laughs> they will be in the theaters. Oh, cool. I know, oh, actually. Wow. <laughs> so, congratulations thanks on so your much. movie nomination. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.